When I was a boy, my father gave me one of those air rifles. He said he'd rather that I shoot at tin cans in the backyard, but then he knew that one day the temptation would become too great and I would want to shoot at birds. He said that I could shoot at all the blue jays I wanted, probably knowing I wouldn't be able to hit one, but to always remember that it's a sin to kill a mockingbird. A sin. A crime against God. Only time I ever heard him use that word, I asked him why, and he said it was because they were innocent. And I became a lawyer. We practiced it, Tom, and I practiced that question over and over. State's case, right. Not only has the state not produced any evidence, I mean not one square inch, that Tom Robinson committed the crime of which he is accused, the state has yet to provide any credible evidence that the crime in which Tom Robinson's accused was committed at all. The defendant isn't guilty, but someone in this courtroom is. Now, we practiced that for six weeks. I have nothing but pity in my heart for the chief witness for the state. But my pity does not extend so far as to her putting a man's life at stake, which she has done in an effort to get rid of her own guilt. Mayla Yule is the victim of poverty, ignorance, and of her father. Tomorrow you can pity her, but not today. Mayella Yule was beaten by someone who led almost exclusively with their left hand. And when Bob Yule committed a felony by falsely swearing out a warrant against Tom Robinson, he put his signature to that lie with his left hand. Tom Robinson sits before you having been mocked by the prosecutor for taking an oath by placing his left hand on the Bible with the only working hand he possesses, his right hand. Now, we practiced that question for six weeks, five hours a day. I asked him the first time I met him, I said, Tom, they're going to ask you why you were doing chores for free for May Ellie Yule. He said, I felt sorry for her. I said, no, no. Can't say that. Say, it looked like she could use a hand. Now, he didn't need an explanation. He knew that a Negro man can't feel sorry for a white woman, even if he sees that she is taking care of a house and seven children with no help from her drunk and abusive father, and that a simple act of compassion would be seen by this jury as an insult. He feels sorry for us. He doesn't know his place. He's forgotten who he is. So we practiced. Every day. I'd bait him. I'd antagonize him. I treated him with disrespect and contempt. And he never broke. Not once. So, why did he break today? Well, the, the answer is he didn't. You saw him. You heard him. That wasn't a slip of the tongue. Tom Robinson said exactly what he meant. In fact, he said it twice. Because he forgot his place, forgot who he was, forgot what he was. No. Because he remembered, a man will have his dignity, a sin, a crime against God. We can't go on like this. We have got to heal this wound or we will never stop bleeding. We have got to make good this crime. We've got to show Tom Robinson justice in this courtroom. Or we can start gathering the animals two by two because we will be showing God's justice in a hurry. It can't go on like this. We know that. So, let's hasten the 
change. Let's hasten the end of the beginning. Let's do it right now in Maycomb. Let's begin by restoring this man to his family. Let's begin with justice. Can't go on like this. You know what happened on November 21st. You know it. Don't do this. Let him go home. In the name of God, just let him go home. 